The Chinese chronicles tell about the Taoist hermit Shang Shun, who is known to have met repeatedly with Genghis Khan for lengthy conversations. Once, when the country was being ravaged by an unknown epidemic, the ruler of Beijing asked the hermit to protect the people. He prayed, and the sickness retreated. In reply to numerous expressions of gratitude, the hermit said, Prayer is not a thing. All it requires is faith. Exactly. Exactly. Many people think that thought or intention, the word we use is intention, can be imprinted on the water. That is a possibility. Like prayer, if you go to Lourdes, is it prayer that is imprinted on the water? Yes, sir. The Holy Scripture contains these marvelous words, Nothing shall be impossible to him who believes. If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Here the mountain is just a metaphor, of course, but it helps us understand the power of faith. All of mankind's sacred books contain stories about people who were able to create miracles because of their profound spiritual knowledge. Legend tells us that the sea parted before Moses because of his unflinching faith that the Lord would not abandon his people. We have totally indisputable evidence that prayer influences sick people to get better. And it's caused absolutely fantastical recoveries, such as the spread of gangrene suddenly stopping in a person who already had it. With holy water, when it is poured over sick animals or a dying plant, they revive. Those are the facts, and no physical chemist currently is able to understand it. They simply can't. January the 18th. It is the eve of the Orthodox Feast of the Epiphany. Two flasks are filled with ordinary tap water. Early in the morning, one of them is set inside the church near the vessel over which the sacrament of sanctification is to be performed. Every year on January 19th, the faithful and even non-believers hurry into churches to pick up some of the baptismal water. It is believed to possess extraordinary properties. In order to confirm or refute this, the two flasks were taken to the laboratory for study immediately after the service. Here, the water was frozen in a cryogenic chamber and photographed under the microscope. The crystals of the tap water looked like a chaotic, diffused spot. While the water that had been in the church had the rectilinear symmetrical form of a six-pointed star. It is well known that holy water has a very powerful and stable structure. This water can pass its properties. Take only 10 grams of it and dilute it in 60 liters of common water, and the whole amount will have the properties of the holy water. Perhaps scientists will tell us sometime what prayer is. Perhaps scientists will tell us sometime what happens with human nature under the influence of divine grace.
то, что делал Иисус. In my view, what Jesus did represented an informational influence on the water. He acted with his spirituality. He acted through higher spiritual powers. And it is now quite reasonable to imagine changing water in such a way that it would become fairly firm. Сейчас, в общем, вполне разумно. It could be radiation, but could it be only subtle energy? And we are very interested in how subtle energy can be detected by a material. In our time, everybody is sure that weather on the planet is determined by cyclones and anticyclones. We accept the weatherman's daily forecasts as inevitable. Actually, we are waiting for water to make its appearance. Evaporating and turning into whimsical clouds and towering thunderheads, it creates the architectonics of the sky. The countless shades of sunrise and sunset, the rainbows that shoot across the sky, all of them result from the refraction of light rays by the moisture in the atmosphere. Clouds carry this moisture over great distances and it spills down as rain. Rain, hail, snow and mist, winds and storms, gales and hurricanes. All of these complex processes depend on water's mood. We try to second guess how it is going to behave and where on the earth it will bestow its favors, and where it will unleash its wrath. The most we can do is to observe these processes from space, but only observe them. But how alluring the thought is of subjugating the weather. What a sweet bait that is for human vanity. Many peoples have preserved the practice of influencing weather and atmospheric phenomena. These rituals are carefully passed down, unchanged, from generation to generation. If my tributes have been convincing enough, if I have chosen the right time and the right place, and have recited the mantras correctly, and from a pure heart, then the Lord of the water gives us water. We do not place much trust in actions which may be met with a smile these days. Could it be that just one human, not some huge modern laboratory with the latest technologies, but just a single person, could influence a natural process solely by the force of his desire and intentions? And there was outdoor wedding outside a museum in Ontario. And, um, well, we didn't bring umbrellas, but some people did. And the sky was all overcast, and the rain started to come. It was half an hour before the wedding. And it started to rain. All the umbrellas went up. And so I and three students, two other students, said, okay, let's meditate for, uh, for um, better weather. Within a minute, an opening in the clouds came, and the sun just shone right down in this area. Only, not all over, just shone right down this area. By the summer of 1991, Israel had had no rain for two years. The water in the country's only freshwater lake, Lake Kinneret, had fallen 15 centimeters below the critical level. Then, 10,000 Israelis gathered at the Wailing Wall to pray for rain. On the third day, rain came down on the country in torrents. Many people explain this fact as a simple coincidence. Belief in coincidence is neither scientific nor religious. From a scientific standpoint, there is scientific determinism. Well, from a religious standpoint, there are things that are done which have an influence on the outcome. 
Coincidence is a way in which people try to escape bearing any responsibility. Just as the cry of a bird in the mountains can cause a powerful avalanche, or the motion of a butterfly's wing can change the weather over an entire continent, likewise, people can launch global processes solely by the power of their thought. And that is no exaggeration. Not a single scientist who is familiar with systems theory doubts that. It is entirely a question of waiting for a moment when the system is in a state of instability. In a phase of instability, the motion of thought alone is sufficient for the system to start to change. I do not always see it. When my own mistake or sin comes back to me in another guise, although essentially it is a single unit, whatever it is that I did wrong returns to me, not as punishment, but as a result. With all the abundance of water on the planet, less than 1% of it is available fresh water. This supply has been practically unchanged in the course of human history, while the population has been constantly growing. The world has never seen as many people as there are on the planet today, 6.5 billion. There would have been enough fresh water for everybody if it were not for the severe attack of the human civilization. Look, imagine, if there will simply not be any water, that it will go away deep underground. Who shall give you water which will spout freely from the ground and be easy for you to reach? Today, more than a billion people of the earth lack access to safe drinking water. Over five million people, half of them children, die from this reason each year. This is ten times more than perish from wars each year. If this problem is left unsolved, water may become a source of international conflict in the 21st century. Already now, it is gradually attaining the status of a base resource which is beginning to figure in the political dialogue among countries and peoples. See, we talk a lot about an upcoming oil crisis because we will run out of oil. But I think it is even more important that we worry about the water that we don't run into a water crisis. According to UN data, around 10 million tons of oil annually pours into the world's oceans. Along the US Atlantic coast are buried 90,000 containers of radioactive waste with 100 kilocuries of activity, while the European part has 500 kilocuries. Countries with sea access dump industrial, construction, and radioactive waste into the ocean. As it is dumped and descends through a column of water, some of the polluting substances dissolve and change not only the quality of the water, but also its memory. The ocean is also still capable of erasing these memories because of its salinity. But nonetheless, the dilution effect is there. It also needs to be discussed and studied. Because at very great levels of delusion, sometimes a memory begins to have even a stronger influence than at slight, so to speak, levels of delusion with high concentrations. We have to pay attention to this. This is a very difficult period of our planetary existence. Today, we've already plowed up all the lands possible, and we've lost 33% of our green covering and half the plankton in the ocean. So the problem might seem to be far off, but there is water everywhere. <laughs> 